On this week's breaking news, it's going to be a lot about Star Wars because May the 4th is right around the corner. We get a leak of a new NASA set and some new things on Fortnite. All that and much, much more on this week's breaking news. Today's episode is brought to you by Back to Brickware, my newest venture into the AFL merchandise, the ultimate Lego-inspired clothing line that's not just fashionable, but also celebrates the very foundation of the Lego system we all know and love. Imagine minimalist designs that seamlessly blend style and nostalgia. Back to Brickware brings you high-quality apparel inspired by the iconic Lego bricks we know and love. Each piece is crafted with precision and attention to detail, making it a must-have for any Lego enthusiast. These aren't just your average threads. We're talking about minimalist designs that don't scream at you, but just show your nerddom in a classy way. And of course, they're inspired by designs found in the Lego system. And you know what screams quality? Embroidery. Almost every piece is stitched with love, featuring those iconic Lego elements. It's like wearing your childhood memories, but making them fashionable. So whether you're a hardcore a fool or just want to rock some seriously cool gear, check out the Back to Brick Wear page on Etsy. Dive into the collection, embrace the Lego spirit, and let's make some memories together. Back to Brick Wear, where the style meets nostalgia. Head over to the Back to Brick Etsy Etsy page and let the fashion adventure begin. Happy building, my friends. Lego. 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 Breaking news. Hey, everybody. Breaking welcome news. back to Back breaking to Brick. News. I'm your host, Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow AFLs about their Lego designs, and we get down to the breaking news to talk about all things Lego has been up to for the past week. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. As always, make sure to subscribe so you're up to date on all the latest episodes and Lego news, because I come out with new episodes every Friday to talk about the latest Lego news to keep you up to date, because, well, there's always a lot, and it's hard to always keep track, so I built this podcast to focus on catching up for the week, and if you're inclined, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm almost to 700, which is crazy. I'm almost to 1,000, which is even crazier. So I'm excited to continue building this and hopefully seeing 1,000 by my birthday in a month and a half. So fingers crossed, if we can get some more people to come on, please tell your friends about it and we'll continue to promote the podcast. If you want to be a patron or a Lego stud to help support the Back to Brick brand, you can go over to our Patreon page and support the podcast. I always call out our support Porters, Belfont Brick Studio, Ryan Moore, Franco Portelli, Jimmy Tucker, Ryan S., Matthew Vanden Bogart, our newest members, Paul Snellen and Lee Jackson. So thank you so much for joining the podcast team and helping support the Back to Work brand. You can get the podcast ad-free and get a lot of the instructions as I continue to build more and more Lego sets because, well, a lot of things are calling out to me to build and I have to do that. I actually purchased all the pieces for my latest model, the Galactic Star Cruiser, and it looks beautiful. I actually submitted it to Brick Vault to see if they would like to produce it. It's a call out to the Disney hotel that is no longer, uh, well, no longer housing people, but it was a really cool ship. And I think it had some great detailing that I just wanted to capture in a MIDI scale form. So I'm going to share those digital files with all of my patrons today. So you can go check that out. On the admin side, I'm continuing to sort bricks, which takes forever to do, but I'm really excited to continue building on these newest commissions that I'm working on. If you'd like to have a commission done, you can do it and come and talk to me as well. And uh, just working a lot on the video and YouTube channel. It's taking time, but just a lot of learning process. And and I'm also asking for your ideas. What would you like to see from the Back to Brick brand more and more? Because I, well, there's a lot going on and I have a lot of ideas that it's hard to focus and try to get the best quality information and yeah, just, just a lot of different things. So I would love your support and help. You can email me at Back to Brick at gmail.com or go over to back to brick two on instagram we're going to be doing our set review and rebrickable mock review today our set is going to be 76426 hogwarts castle boathouse and our rebrickable mock is chopper from star wars rebels by ron mcfatty so i'm excited to talk about both of those as we haven't talked about harry potter in a while and as we get closer to may the 4th this is a really cool one to add to the collection as well All right, let's get into this week's breaking news. You've probably heard of him, and you've probably gone to one of his exhibits before. Nathan Sawaya decided to stop being a successful lawyer on Wall Street and take up Lego. He's decided that, well, 
I love Lego. Let's build some amazing creations and then let's tour around the world because that's what everybody wants to do. He's traveled to over 100 different cities and 24 countries with his different Lego designs and sculptures because, well, sculptures, they're pretty big and definitely a really cool exhibit to see if you haven't seen it before. He's been featured in a Lady Gaga video as well and just continuing his expansion of art and detailing. Now, when he talks about his uh, process of leaving, you know, it was definitely difficult, but he loved building with Lego and being an artist. It was really a fun way to get his engagement out. And and in the latest article from The Guardian, he talks about that Lego is more his job. It's no longer a hobby. So he actually doesn't have any Lego sets at his home because he focuses on his continued sculpture and adaption. And he talks about uh, all the different aspects that he needs to do to build his art. There's a lot of research that goes into it. Am I doing a piece that people are familiar with? If it's a replica, let's say on an art history piece, that's going to require going and looking at the original gathering photographs and whatnot. If it's just pouring out of my brain, then it's more trial and error. And I totally relate to that because I do a lot of either artwork pieces that I like to do or looking at current sculptures uh, or um, architecture or vehicles to try to repurpose into Lego form. So that's uh, that's always been an exciting thing for me and it's, it's an exciting exhibit. So if it ever comes to your town for the Art of the Brick, definitely would go and check it out to see these amazing sculptures. NASA is on its way back to the moon, and what better way to represent that but through LEGO? They've done a lot of collaborations with LEGO before, as we've seen a lot of the city sets have a space, and we have the new space theme. We've got the space shuttle a few times and a bunch of other different rockets. Well, they're now expanding to the newest Artemis Space Launch System, or the Ares Space Missions, which we've had already had a launch of Ares 1, which is the unmanned back around the moon to collect data. That I actually got the chance to see the launch, which is so cool. Definitely an experience because it was also a night launch. I'm hoping that I'll continue to go to the second and third, but this set is, well, extremely impressive. It's going to be released probably mid-May, about May 15th, at $260 for over... 3,601 pieces. That's a pretty impressive piece uh, price per piece. And it does include not only the rocket itself, but includes the entire launch pad. So you've got the full launch structure as well as the tower. You know, I guess it's not as complicated a build. I think it just has a lot of detail and some of the pieces are definitely probably easier to find. There's going to be stickers and such, but it's an impressive model. It definitely is going to rival some of the other ones that they've built before and very tall. I mean, the Eiffel Tower is pretty tall. I wonder if this will be taller than that. Now, having this part of the Icon series, well, it's iconic as we use this to get back to the moon. And the moon lander actually is going to be SpaceX's starship. So I'm excited if they actually use that one because they haven't tested anything and actually got it back on the ground safely, I think only once before. So they got a lot of testing still to do, but that'd be cool to have that as a Lego set as it will become part of history. So this will be a fun thing to see after the Star Wars reveals on May the 1st. So get excited, all those space fans and NASA fans out there. People continue to have a passion for Lego and the sets that Lego comes out with in the Lego store, Lego online, but there's always a passion to continue building that elsewhere. And a father and son using their Lego passion decided to open a bricks and minifigure shop in Clearwater, Florida. They talked with the ABC Action News about their adventures with building with Lego and that they'd love to continue giving it to, well, a lot of the other community members and expanding as they enjoy Lego. Maybe others will too. So they talk about their love of Lego and how they get presents every Christmas of Lego. And now they talk about how they had the opportunity to open the store. And every day is like Christmas. I get to see a new Lego set come in that I haven't seen before or one that I've been waiting to see for a while, says Connor. And they continue to expand it with my own creation contests, building clubs, being able to host there, similar to what you'd see in like a tabletop or comic book store. So the Bricks and Minifigures gets to expand into Florida a little bit more and more and more people get to love lego just in a little more community sense if they don't have a lego store nearby 
Lego has been a great teaching tool, not only in the classrooms we see in elementary schools, high schools, but also in college courses. There's a hospitality course actually at Penn State in University Park that has decided that they're going to use this as a learning initiative for hospitality management education. There's a brand new course that's going to be available this coming semester where Lego Learning Institute is building, well, different events that able to teach excellence to experiment, test, and implement, and teaching innovations that address an important structural con- uh, instructional concern. The instructor, Michael Tews, describes it as this approach is hands-on, visual, and interactive. The more we can incorporate hands-on, interactive, and social elements in the classroom, the more we can create engaging learning opportunities for students. There's three different building events where they build their minifigure based on colors of, you know, their personality traits and um, emotional traits, all that. Then they come together and do different experiments where they actually build based on the podcast topics that they've done for the HR from Happy Valley, talking mental health, fun in the workplace, and so many different aspects that I think are implemented well in something like this that, you know, different universities continue to expand. It creates a level of interaction with building, not only with Lego, but building teams and understanding of other people and having, uh, well, a medium that is easy to have people understand and having minifigures that represent themselves. It's just a really engaging way to have something like this in hospitality and engineering and architecture and social sciences, all of them. I think Lego should be in more and more places as we continue to teach and learn for that expansion. It's the news you've been waiting for. May the 4th final sets have been revealed. We're going to get quite a few new ones that on top of the ones that were already revealed. One, including the Ultimate Collector Series TIE Interceptor, which has been rumored for quite some time, I think almost a year at this point, and it's going to be 1931 pieces and $230, which is $10 less than what we usually expect. It's $240 for the uh, Land Speeder and I believe the X-Wing, so... Uh, yeah, and the design is really done well because at the similar scale of what we see in the x wings so you can have your full battle scene of them chasing each other. It's also similar in scale to the Ultimate Collector Series TIE Fighter, but there is a design difference as, you know, the, the TIE Fighter had more of a brick-built style of pod. This one is very much a circular pod where they have um, the, some of the curved pieces that allow it to have more of that ball shape to it. It does have an intricate interior with stickers and different tiles to it. And the cockpit has, uh, well, the standard like TIE Fighter cockpit glass. It does come with a new TIE Fighter with some arm prints to it. All in all, a really excellent set. And I'm excited to see it in person. I love the the callback to it. It's been 25 years since the first one came out and having this as an official set. And it is a remake, which a lot of people are like, well, there's so many other sets that they could build and they will, they'll get to them hopefully. So just stick around and, you know, check out the sailing barges. They'll come out in September and then whatever the next one is for next May the 4th, they're going to continue to expand. Some other sets that came out is the Phantom Menace Brickhead set at 732 pieces at 55 dollars and we're getting six total mini fi- total brick heads well i'd say five and a half uh we're gonna get anakin skywalker in the smaller set uh well kind of when he's a young kid because phantom menace jar jar binks which we've been waiting for for so so long so i know a lot of people are very excited about this and uh, i think a lot of people uh, I would say are probably disappointed that it's only one big set instead of having separate little ones like they did for Lord of the Rings because, yeah, it's expensive. And that's a that's a lot of minifigures or I keep saying minifigures, brickheads. We also have Queen Amidala in her full um, full royal dress, Captain Captain Panaka, which is part of her royal guard. Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, the only thing is his mustache is kind of bad, and it's not the most detailed of the brickheads. And Darth Maul. Darth Maul is awesome. They've got some great printing for that, as well as the yellow eyes and the double-hilted lightsaber, all something that a lot of people want. And if you're a big Brickheads fan, this is, and a Star Wars fan, well, you just won the lottery, and believe me, I, I've won the lottery because it is excellent. And one other thing came is coming out. It's called the Lego Star Wars The Force of Creativity. It's a table talk book, and it's going to come in at a cost of $150. Now, it's a 
page book where they describe, you know, all the Lego sets that we've seen, the history of um, how Star Wars came to be with Lego, and some sets that were not built. And then in the back section, they actually have Star Wars mocks that the community has built. And there's some amazing ones and definitely some designers that I've had conversations with and just talked to and seen their work online. And it's an excellent idea. Only problem is it's $150, which is crazy, and I do want it. It's an excellent thing to have for Lego books if you're a Lego book collector, especially in the Star Wars sense of having, you know, they come out with the minifigure encyclopedia every year, but this is the full breakdown of it. And having the Lego group come out with this, you know, they did that with the Ferrari, and that was limited edition. I'm not sure if this is a limited edition thing, and I hope it isn't because it, one, it's expensive, and two, it'll sell out really quickly. Um, it, and they rate it as an 18 plus. I'm not really sure why they do that, but uh, it, it's okay. They they also come with a couple other little artwork pieces in it. It is an addition to something that we weren't expecting, but uh, I think it's still a welcomed addition. So that's our releases for Lego Star Wars May the 4th be with you, but let's talk about the gifts with purchase. We're getting three gifts with purchase this year. The first one is the AAT, which is a poly bag style, and you're going to get it when you spend $40 or more on Lego Star Wars. Now, it's nothing special. It does have some nice rounded pieces to it and all in tan and dark tan, and it's part of the prequel series. They haven't built one of these in a bit in the minifigure scale, and it'd be really interesting if they did an Ultimate Collector series of it. The second one is the Battle of Yavin collectible coin, and it's free with orders above $90. Now, we've had coins before, and this one is no different. It comes in a box with uh, some detailing to it that sh outline the TIE Fighter, excuse me, the X-Wing flying through the trench, and it's in a red outline of the X-Wing, and I think that that's pretty much it. There's not much else to it. It is double-sided. One has the X-Wing cockpit on the back, and then, the, as I said, the front with the TIE Fighter. I'm guessing that it's looking at it either through the scope of the X, uh, the uh, intercept, uh, TIE Interceptor, or it's just a collectible coin. So that's something that you can get if you really are inclined to. It's nothing that a lot of Star Wars fans want. They really want the uh, the special minifigures that they used to do. And uh, some of the smaller builds, the micro builds that they did were really cool too because you could add on to those over the years. But the coins are kind of getting old. Uh, yeah, so maybe LEGO should take a hint for next year. And then the largest one is going to be the Trade Federation Troop Carrier. It's free with, with a purchase of $160 or more. And to be honest, it's okay. It could just have been a regular Lego set instead of having it as a gift of purchase. As I've said, they'd done some other ones before, and some of them have exclusive minifigures included. So this set itself only has like the exclusive part of the droid um, chess piece is blue with printed tan on it, which has never been done before. And the droids have been the same since... 2000 and 1999 so i guess that's kind of a callback to having that classic piece to it and it does have a beautiful well of course beautiful brown pieces that'll probably break but at 262 pieces i'm not sure if it's worth it but with the sets that are coming out you're going to hit 160 dollars quite quickly so <laughs> get ready to have this part of your battle pack set as May the 4th comes up, this weekend is going to be from May 1st through May 5th, and there's going to be some really cool events. There's actually going to be a live stream in the U.S., Germany, and the U.K. on the 1st of May, where they're going to not only talk about the sets that they've built, but they're likely going to be some reveals of other things, either anticipated or discussed for later. They do put some like teasers in the background, so definitely check those out. Even check out the boxes, because that's what they've shown before on some of the box art that, hey, this is what's coming next. So for the United States, it's going to be live on May 1st. It's going to start at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they'll do special offers, new set reveals, and a chance to win a new TIE Interceptor set signed by the LEGO Star Wars designer. And you can go find that at lego.com slash live. 
I love these events where they've done LegoCon before. I wish that they would actually make it a full style of convention instead of just the show, which the first season sucked. Second wasn't bad, and I guess not seasons, but the second year. And this year, we'll see how that progresses as well. They do reveal some fun sets included to it, but they'll have some nice themes because, well, they have production that they've done videos for, and I'm wondering what offers they'll provide because this is before the release. Uh, the re- Well, this will be after the midnight drop of those sets, which will be a crazy evening, and I'll be staying up, of course, and a lot of you I know will too, so the site's going to take a hit and probably a cue, so just get ready for things like that. Lego Insiders will also get a chance to have a wonderful art piece, which is the 25th anniversary poster, and it's got a ton of minifigures throughout the Skywalker saga. We've got Darth Vader, we've got R2-D2, we've got Chewbacca, we've got um, Jar Jar Binks, we've got Grogu, and it's just a plethora of figures. And There is actually some controversy behind it because there are minifigures on here that have not been produced. So are they just, uh, the artist took some creative, creative liberties or what? And it seems that they had, and so people wrote to Lego and said, hey, you know, what is this? Like, let's talk about why these figures are in there. And the artist came out and said, hey, Lego, let me kind of do the minifigures that are the most like impactful to me and there are of course some other ones that they had to do based on lego's um, requirements but i i think we might see some of these minifigures and we might not i think that leaves some people pretty disappointed in some of the figures that they've seen and would love to have so yeah just maybe we'll stick around and see some of these come out because they've talked about some other sets for the summer having these exclusive figures and yeah Because, I mean, I know Cal Kestis is on his way, but we haven't seen pictures of it, and there's definitely some rumors of maybe his ship. Who knows? So I like the creative creative liberty that they gave the artist, and these are very impactful characters, and a fun poster to get. I think it's going to be 1,800 insiders points to purchase that. There's two more gifts with purchase that have popped up on the internet. The only issue is... It doesn't look like we're going to see them, or they're only exclusive to some small stores. There is a new keychain that is the R2-D2 projecting the brick that's for the 25th anniversary, and it looks really cool. It does have like the turquoise like hologram style to it. And then there's a notebook with a similar artwork uh, on the front, and you can get it in Europe at two different stores. One is a German retailer by J.B. Spleidwern, which is giving away the R2-D2 embezzle keychain with orders of 150 euros or more, while the Dutch toy store Inner Toys is handing it out for 50 euros spent. And then if you spend over 200 euros at the J.B., you can get it as a the notebook. So I don't know if these will come to the US or anywhere else in the UK. I mean, this is a really cool keychain and they've done some cool keychains before, but I'm likely to see it for like 50 to 60 bucks on eBay, as well as the notebook. That's just how it goes if these don't sell in different places. But they did say that they wouldn't do exclusive things in countries. So maybe we'll see an expansion to it. I don't think we're going to get it for May the 1st. Maybe we'll get it for some of the summer Star Wars sets that come out. And finally, there was another little poly bag that popped up. It's a TIE Interceptor poly bag. And it's going to be released on May 1st where you can get this fun little poly bag probably at your... um, other lego stores like target and it doesn't say it's a gift of purchase but it, it it's the same tie fighter that we've seen before that came with the death star globe or the planet series that they did that included a tie pilot so yeah it's nothing insanely special but you know if you don't have the money 230 dollars to get the ultimate collector series this one is a fun one as well it's it's small <laughs> and still the tie interceptor There was a recent Fortnite survey that asked LEGO fans what they wanted to see come from mods and different uh, things that they can purchase in the store to add on to LEGO um, as they continue to expand LEGO Fortnite footprint. A recent Fortnite survey asked players questions regarding purchases of bundles of LEGO Fortnite items in the item shop and which one would be more appealing to someone 
These bundle ideas also include outfit potentials and being bundled in with Lego sets. So that could be cool. We could see some of these outfits be in Lego sets themselves and, of course, in the Lego Fortnite game. As they continue to expand and have these, we're, we're seeing not only the basics, but we're seeing like city, we're seeing medieval themes, luxury, island, farming, Vikings. So they were asking a lot of different questions to see what they could add to the bundles that would entice people to purchase them. I wonder what the percentage cut is. It's definitely not, it's probably not 50 50. It's definitely a little bit leaning towards, I'd say, Lego, since they were the ones that gave the IP the abilities for Fortnite to use this. If you're a Fortnite player and you haven't taken the survey, I definitely would do so so that you can let them know exactly what you want to see in some of the upcoming bundles and potential sets LEGO will be doing in collaboration with Fortnite. Another interesting mod that is likely to come to LEGO Fortnite is tameable creatures. Now, there's all kinds of creatures that you can run and kind of murder uh, (laughs) or kill to get the food and different resources from, but there might be some ways to build your own farm having these LEGO um, creatures and having your own zoo and different aspects that might entice other players to continue to expand and have some fun ways to not only build your resources and food, but, you know, have uh, animals built. Honestly, that's a really fun way to engage in a farming community or having maybe even domesticating them to the point of you can ride them to into battle would be really fun. Like, I think what's the game Ark. So if you could do dinosaurs, that would be pretty, pretty awesome. People have built Lego engines before where they're working, they've got the full piston movement, and I don't think they create power or have fire to them, but there's definitely some different adaptions that they can use. And someone decided that they would create the first turbo-powered Lego engine. And when you have a turbo charger, essentially it's forcing the air into an engine, uh, which means the engine is getting more fuel, more power from the spark plug fires. Fan is spun up by exhaust gassing, exiting the engine is higher than the engine speed, the faster the turbine spins. So having this in a Lego form is kind of cool, having a fan uh, add that extra power to it. So you can see the engine kind of not only, you know, rev up because of the motor, but then it really goes because it's using that forced air that's been produced to create a extra force to it. There's a YouTube video that I'll post in the description so you can check that out and see just how, you know, awesome some people are with Technic in these motor systems. Lego does some other products just alongside Lego where they're doing different wall calendars. They actually have the 2025 wall calendar, which has a rainbow colored heart to it. They have some cookie trays that I think I don't think I've ever seen before, but that could be fun to create some Lego cookie trays and then the Christmas tree puzzle. So these are going to be available in UK bookstores and then available in the United States at different bookstores as well, pricing about 15 bucks to 20 bucks which is normal for this type of thing. The puzzle itself is just like a Christmas tree, long scale with different um, uh, uh, buildable things that you can put on your tree. And it's only 100 pieces, so it's pretty small. And you can split them up into four different puzzles. So it's fun for the whole family to get engaged at the Christmas time and get ready for 2025 with the latest calendar. We have another gift with purchase probably coming in July, just based on our celebration in the United States of the 4th of July, and it's called a celebration of fireworks or fireworks celebration. We're going to get a couple little mini figures that are going to be sitting and watching some fireworks display as a gift with purchase. They've done fireworks displays before as the latest one in the Disney castle. They did those and, and it's a fun way to have these small designs now being able to be gift with purchase instead of in such a large set like that. And that's all the breaking news we have today. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. I appreciate everyone that's been listening and make sure you subscribe, leave us a review and come join the Lego studs team over at our Patreon. Now we're going to move into our set review. This set is 76426 Hogwarts Castle Boathouse, part of the Hogwarts line. Surprise, surprise. It's an A-plus set at 350 pieces. You'll get 247 insider's points, and it does have a rating from 15 people of 5 stars, and it'll come across at a cost of $37.99. Now, what's n- nice about this set is that... Uh, It's about the same piece count. We got $350 and $38. So 
just at about 10 cents per piece. And I think having the five minifigures that come with it validates the extra $2 that you're going to need. The five minifigures are Harry Potter, Neville Longbottom, Dean Thomas, Hermione Granger, and Professor McGonagall, as well as Hedwig and Trevor the Frog. Trevor the Frog is actually hidden inside the base of the boathouse, and we do get some and Hedwig will be sitting on the side. The boathouse itself is mostly a tower that you can pull your boat through, and McGonagall is waiting there with her list of names, checking them off to make sure everybody's there as they enter into the Great Hall. The boats are brick-built, and they're pretty simple. They have two figures, and they've got each figure has their wand, a little light on the front, and a paddle to go through. They, it does come with a collectible Hogwarts portrait that you can add to the series of portraits that they've done for a bunch of the other sets so that you can build that collection up because you have to get one per set. And you also um, can add this to get qualified for the fruit shop, which is $200. And then, um, well, maybe you can get some other gifts with purchase later because there's always more and more that you can get. The, the design itself is pretty well done because you can pull the boat in and it does stop at the end of the ramp to it. And the boathouse is also a scene from the Deathly Hollows that we see Snape and the final moments of his life. And, it's, I mean, it's super, it's an extremely sad experience for that. And there's definitely been expansions onto it, but then you can also put Voldemort, a lot of different stories that you can put in the boathouse and add it to your larger scale, uh, minifigure scale Hogwarts castle. So I'd recommend getting it. If you're a big Harry Potter fan and like to have like the first year and maybe even have the last year scene built into it, it's fun, little set, nothing that it would be too complicated, especially at an 8 plus range. And that's our set review. Now we'll move into our mock review. This mock is Chopper, the C1 series Astro Mech by Ron McFaddy. And what I love about this set is it is a beautifully detailed set of Chopper that we've seen in Lego Rebels as well, Lego Rebels, Star Wars Rebels, and Ahsoka. The chopper bot is a little bit smaller in stature to R2-D2. It does have more of a cone-shaped head and then a rounded head. And the little wheel on the front is pretty visible instead of having the shielded section to it. And chopper also has two arms that kind of flail on his head, which I think are, it's pretty funny. Now you can take the base wheel off and, or have it internally stashed similar to what the R2-D2 can do. And it's of the same scale of the $100 R2-D2. So you can have both these great droids that um, we've seen throughout the Star Wars uh, saga be together. Chopper is, of course, more of the serial, the um, mass murderer that laughs when he kills st- stormtroopers, and R two D two is more of the just shock and get out of there <laughs> um, kind of droid. And it's only nine hundred and eighty pieces, so about a hundred dollars in normal Lego cost, but. Being that it's a mock, you're going to spend maybe a little bit more. The designer says it's about 75 euros to build. I'd say 120 to 140 dollars with shipping and tax on Rebrickable. You can get these instructions over a Rebrickable for five pounds. And there is a, a lot of people that like it, over three th- 305 likes. And you can follow the designer as well as they do some other great builds. And that's our Rubricable Mock Review. Thank you again for everyone tuning into the podcast and getting to the end here. Please send me an email if you have any ideas or you're interested in having some commissions done. Love to talk to the community and engage more. All right, I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative, get out there, and go build something. 